Thank you, Sean. Uh, thank you, FFL, the entire corporate staff and everything that everyone does to make this company so great. Uh, to seeing us this, this past December eclipse, 325 million, uh, just lets me know each and every day I'm at the right place. Uh, my name is Grady Polson. I'm so excited to be on here at the TNL today with you all. Um, my topic today is how to make 2021 your year and some topics I want to talk about is making sure you're on the right track. Uh, some advice while selling, not specific sales tips, but an overarching message on selling itself and what we should be looking for and markers that we should be setting for ourselves, recruiting advice te and team building. And so um, I've been fortunate enough to be with FFL since January 3rd, 2018. Uh, that was the day that I resigned from my previous business and decided to swipe the card, get some leads, and start dialing the phone. And the uh, roller coaster of mostly up, mostly up roller coaster uh, since that day has been nothing short of an incredible business uh, that has been built with um, you know our great agencies here at FFL and with so many great people that get to uh, capitalize on the opportunity that Sean Mike and the founding partners. Um, that are now Integrity Partners have built for us. So, um, like I said, my name is Grady Polson. I've got a bunch to cover for you. I'm so excited to be on here with you and uh, to do anything I can to help give you that little bit of insight, a uh, glimpse of hope or direction in, in the, oftentimes the beginning of our new business, confusion, right? That's the thing that I think many of us don't understand with this business is that it's a business that we're starting a business and these are there are new things that we have to tackle. There's new challenges we have to learn how to overcome. And the great thing about FFL is we're surrounded by other great people who have already figured them out. And that's what I think that uh, the reason why our company continues to grow at the rapid, the rabid pace at which it's growing at um, is because of the selflessness of each and every person in this company to share a cross line and up line, down line, up lines, down line, cross lines, up line, the information that's helping them get to where they want to be. And uh, I think a big part of that is gratitude. Uh, gratitude, I think, is a major component in FFL's DNA. The fact that we are so appreciative, we don't start at 30% comp and no leads and have to walk around the mall talking to strangers. And I have to feel guilt if I don't recruit the Chili's server, um, uh, it, you know, that to build my business, that that's the opportunity we have here is that we've got so much upside and such a great net to cast to introduce people to FFL. So um, I just want to give you a little bit of backstory, a tiny, tiny bit of backstory. Um, you know, no one, everyone's stories are boring, but it's their stories. And so I think that if I could share just a tiny bit with you, it might give you some insight as to where I am today, what I, what my goals are for the future and how maybe my story may parallel some of yours and what you should look for as key indicators on that you've made the right decision to keep pushing forward because this is the best business ever. So um, as I mentioned, January 3rd, 2018 was my first day dialing the phones. I had resigned on uh, my, I had a business that I had that I was running for a few years. I saw the upside of the FFL. I messaged Andrew Taylor, and he checked his other Facebook box. So many of you out there who've got other boxes or the, the um, it's a different box. It's the one that you have to like ask permission to get into. Go check that one because there could be some great prospects in there that are messaging you looking to get started with our business. Um, but I messaged Andrew Taylor. Thank goodness he responded. And, um, and we got on the phone, we talked about the business. He got me in contracting and I didn't do anything for like six months. And because I was just watching the group, I was seeing what was going on. I was making sure this was something I could bring home to my wife, something that I wanted to spend money on, right? When you don't have a lot of money, spending a thousand bucks in leads is a very foreign concept. So I watched for a long time. I got in the Facebook group. I saw people putting up great big numbers each and every day, each and every week. And that really validated a lot for me. This is something that, that had legs. It's something that had some, some, a strong foundation. This business didn't, wasn't built on sand. It was built on concrete and bedrock with rebar and, and uh, <coughs> reinforced, uh, uh, <laughs> reinforced sides. And, um, and that gave me a lot of promise. And so for me, when, when, I, when, when I had my third child, I had to make the decision to, do I continue on the, the plan that I'm on, right? The plan that I'm on, it was a business that I that I'd started, uh, partners that I had been working with for four years, it wasn't paying us what we all wanted to be paid, or do I take this leap of faith? 
this young guy who seems to be ha have some of the answers on how to sell insurance, seemed to have built a successful team, this Facebook group, you know, they always look like real people. I went and clicked on like 15 people's Facebook profiles and they weren't bots from Pakistan. And I was like, okay, so you want me to spend a thousand dollars? This seems like a pretty impressive operation if they're trying to ping me for a thousand bucks. But it, and it, and it wasn't, it was, it was a hundred percent everything that I wanted it to be, right? I wanted it to be rewarding. I wanted it to be challenging. I wanted it to, to, to challenge me to grow and it did all of that. And, um, I took the leap of faith January 3rd. I went, uh, walked away from my previous business and booked up 30 appointments, ended up seeing 20 and ended up sitting on 10 and I sold one. My first week, I did what they told me to do, but I only sold one. But it was uh, Patricia P, $43 a month Eagle on January 10th. Um, and uh, that started me off. That validated everything. And two days later, the Marico deposit hit. And I was like, holy cow, that's, this, this is real. She got approved in the home. She's happy. She was looking for insurance. She filled out a form requesting coverage. I showed up. And guess what happened? I showed her three options, she picked the middle one, and two days later I got paid and she got a policy. Guys, that for me was like, holy cow, because coming from previous business endeavors, which took so long to get compensated, um, never know what's really going on, puts me in a position now where this is real. So fast forward my first month, uh, issue paid about 14,000, which was fantastic. 14,000 uh, had been more money than I ever made in <laughs> any month ever, previous in my entire life. And, uh, and that was, it was incredible. So what do you do after you make more money in your entire life? You go on vacation, right? So, so my wife and the kids, we pack up, we go to California and visit her mom and life was great, right? We'd held this money. I'm, I'm buying dinners. I'm filling up her pantry. Uh, you heard stock in her fridge, you know, bought her a new TV. It was great. You know, I'd, I had all this money and, and guess what happened while I'm on vacation? Well, one of those people, Patricia didn't cancel, but someone canceled, you know, bills at home started racking up. I realized I need to buy more leads. And all of a sudden, like, I'm like, hold on. So I got to keep selling all the time. And that was like a wake up call for me. So that was a big deal. So we ended up at the end of February, my second month, so February, 2018, I'd issue, we issued 8,000. So went the wrong direction. Uh, Chantel gets on me. She's like, you, we didn't start this new business for you to go backwards. And I was like, you're the one that wanted to visit your mom for a week and a half. And so <laughs> we, ended up figuring, we ended up figuring it out. But in that same time period, in February, I happened to go to convention. And I went to convention and that changed my life. Because I, you know, the things I was struggling with my first month, things I was struggling with my second month, the think about it objections, the no-show objections, the get the check objections, the right lead flow objections, the right schedule objections, how to set up bank account challenges, the when to hire staff, figuring that stuff out, when to get office space, just the questions I needed answered from the uncertainty of this new business were res resolved for me at that first convention. I flew out to Dallas by myself, it's just me. I didn't know anybody except Trey Honeycutt was the only friend I had next to Andrew, um, but Andrew was busy because he's Andrew. And Trey Honeycutt befriended me and took me out to barbecue and I forever will be grateful for Trey for being a friend early on in this business and helping me through those early sticky times um, and, a comp and, and just being there as someone that I could call on when he had no financial recourse he was there to answer some questions about diabetes for me and I'll never be able to completely thank him except for every time I get a chance to I will so um, but that first month I I issued 8,000 but I got questions answered I got questions answered I got questions answered I got questions answered and you guys all have coming up here an opportunity to get your questions answered and so I, I, I urge I, I plead I push that to, to get yourself to a nearby event and put yourself in a position where you can get around other great people to get the questions answered that you need for this business to become more clear for you. Well, so for me, fast forward the second, the next month, um, March, 2018, I issued paid 31,000. 
And for me, that was it. The validation, I got the, I got the energy I needed to get, I got the focus I needed to get, I, I proved to myself I could do it, I, 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 I leveled up myself to a place where I'm, you know, knock on the home, they're not home, what do I do? Sit up front, dial more appointments, right? Because that's what top producers do. Dial more appointments from the car. Guy's not home, do I go to the bar? Do I go to Top Golf? Do I go shopping? No, I, I'm working. I'm, at, I'm away from my kids and my wife. It's time to work. So I dial appointments. And guess what? I booked up two more appointments that night. And guess what? John comes home. I wait seven minutes till he gets in the front door, takes his shoes off, takes a pee, and I knock on the door and say, hey, John, we had an appointment an hour and a half ago. I missed you, bud. I'm here now. And guess what? John says, oh, sorry, sorry, Grady. Come on in. And now we're sitting at the kitchen table, and I take care of him because he kind of feels a little bit guilty that he made me sit outside for an hour and a half. And then I got those two more appointments later at night that I booked while I was waiting for John to come home. And guess what happens? Now you start this roller coaster, or not roller coaster, I'm sorry. You start this chain events of success. And for me, that really worked. Ended the first year, 250 plus thousand issue paid. Um, team did about 150,000. Second year, uh, issue paid 310,000 on my own pen. Team was doing about 400. And then um, this past year, 2020, with incredible people, incredible leaders, incredible conviction for the goal. Um, our team closed out the year at 2.2 million. And it's only because people made the decision that this was for them. This is where they want to be. This is, they believed in Sean and Andrew in the system, in what's possible. And they continued to build what is now their businesses. They're multi-million dollar a year businesses. They're multi-million dollar a year agencies. They're groups of 10, 20, 50, 100 agents that are now making a living off of the business that was created here at Family First Life. So that's kind of my simple story. And, and, um, and for you all, that I hope that, that my few years here, my three years here now, holy smokes, um, I can try down this next coming up training to give you some insight, clarity, uh, wash away the confusion, and give you some increase the direction on what to do. You're all on great teams. You've all got great managers, great leaders, great mentors. Some things that I may say may conflict with what they say, go talk to them about it. Some things that I say may, may increase what you're already doing or validate what you're already doing. That's a big part of life. I would like correction or validation, but don't leave me blind. Correction or validation. What am I doing wrong? Help me get better. Or I'm doing it right? Okay, keep doing that. That's a big part of life. So, so let's get started. Um, two ways we make money in life, guys. There's two ways. One's, one is called talent and the other is called leverage. Okay, Talent is you being an incredible producer. You can go out there, you can sell a boatload of insurance, you can run your 30, 40 appointments a week, you can, you can knock out 15, 20, 25,000 a week, you can hit up, you can do 50, 60, 80,000 a month. Crazy talented, right? Other talented people, LeBron James, um, Artists, you too, Patrick Mahomes, very, very talented people. But the other way is leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is Jeff Bezos. Leverage is Sam Walton. Leverage is Sean Mike, right? Creating a business where you're compensated from leverage. Now, would you rather have 1% of your own efforts? Or I'm sorry, I apologize, 100% of your own efforts or 1% of 100 people's efforts? And, you know, that's kind of funny when you say it like that. Like, I'd rather have like 100% of 100 people's efforts or 100% of a thousand people's efforts, right? And so like, think about it like that, like what we can do here at Family First Life with an agency building component, with uh, you know, our builder contracts, with our ability to put people in a position where they can go out there and sell on their own pen and say, hey, I wanna introduce this to a few people also and earn 5% of what they make by teaching them what I've learned, that's a, that's a rocket ship towards financial freedom because you're putting people in a position where now they're compensated as well for their efforts, but they're also grateful for you being there to teach them, coach them, and guide them early on in that business. So the idea though is that you're limited by your talent. You're not limited by leverage. And so for leverage, I, I think that that's something that I would like you guys all to focus, focus on and we're going to talk about here. Kind of like I want to talk about the end of the journey right? The beginning of the journey is you learn how to dial and figure out your lead flow and learn how to properly door knock. That's the beginning of your journey. The end of your journey or the, the later part of your journey is you running a multi-million dollar agency. Is you leading and coaching people on how they can become great at this business as well. Is you being put in a position where 
Uh, you have an option to partner with integrity, right? That's, that's, the, that's the second layer of your journey. So I want to talk about some components within that and, and some hel helpful elements to get you on the right track. And I think that that's something that, you know, a little mentor told me, he's like, try to learn where you want to get to, right? If you learn where you are here and you master the, you know, the way to make money with your friends who make money, you know, make five, 10,000, you know, a month who may, you know, if you, if you master this level, what's pushing you, right? It's like the, the law of association, right? We, we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. That's why I try to do everything I can to get around Andrew, Sean, Paul, um, Mark Mead, other, you know, great people, Nick Ayala, Eric Anthony, I gotta say them all now, John Wetmore, Mike Kellamit, uh, Ryan Montalto, am I forgetting one of them? I think that's all, I think that's all the Beatles. Um, no, you know, that's why I'm trying to get around all these great men as much as possible, and women, there's other great women, there's other women partners that are coming, but that's where I'm at, I'm trying to like say, how do I circle, get myself around this circle? So for you guys, right, when you're struggling in the field, are you talking to other agents who are at your same level? Or are you talking to your agency manager who sells a lot? And if your agency manager doesn't sell a lot, don't talk to them about selling. If they don't recruit a lot, don't talk to them about anything, right? Talk to people who have what you want and are exuding the skill set, talents, and have the results of what you want. It's a simple, it's simple, like you can't, don't talk to someone who doesn't, who hasn't created what you want to create. So that's part of it, right? So if you're struggling early on in the field, create, get a running buddy, someone that you guys are both pushing for 10K a week. Right, it's, and that way you talk smack to each other when you don't hit 10K a week, 30, 40K in a month, building your teams. You have to have those people cross line outside of your own, in, your own business to have those sort of challenging conversations with. So let's talk about the right track. And this would be my right track for you and we're gonna talk more about then selling, recruiting. I'm gonna give you a recruiting sort of um, bullet point checklist to go through. We talked about some team building. So got some, some, some elements that I'd hope that you're taking notes and trying to pull out today to put yourself in a position that this afternoon, this weekend, next week, you can start to layer on this new shifted mindset to apply towards the business you're trying to grow. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so here's the right track. And this is one that I believe is just something that you can like set yourselves as layered goals that you're trying to accomplish. Goal one, sell 20K. Okay, get to 20,000 a month. Sean always talks about it every single time. The difference in a 20K and a 40K producer is just more appointments. Okay, so 20K producer is probably running anywhere from 15 to 20 appointments. A 40K producer is running 30 plus appointments, right? But does that mean you're sitting on 30 plus appointments? No, but I love Sean's analogy. He's always like, book 30 appointments, you're gonna sit on 20. You're gonna, as you get better, you're gonna sell 10. My first week, I only sold one of the 10, but by month three and four, I was selling 10 of the 10 of the 20, right? I was selling 10 of the, I was selling 10 of the, at least 50% of what I sat on. And so for us, it's like, like get through the early onset hard stuff because the good, the, the good is there. There, there isn't this, these leaderboards shoved in the Facebook groups and email lists and out from corporate. If people weren't having success, it's, it's, am I mature enough to seek the answers from people that have the results I want? And that's a big component of convention. One thing I didn't, I didn't share is while I was at convention, I went up and introduced myself to every top producer or agency manager or anyone I'd ever heard on a call. Hi, my name is Grady Polson. I issued paid 14,000 last month. You don't know me right now, but I just want to introduce myself and just say I'm grateful and, and appreciative of the training you put on. And I'm, you know, just, just trying to like, not that like, nothing other than just to be appreciative, right? So guess what happens down the road? <clears throat> I introduce myself, you know, I see that same person three months down the road put up a 60K month or something. I go, hey, John, um, just saw you had a huge month. I met you at a convention about, five, about three months ago. I just didn't know if you had two minutes to just kind of share with me what you do. I send that out to five, 10 of the top producers in the company and a good chunk of them would go, hey, that's right, I met you, that graded guy. He was nice and respectful and professional. I'd love to give you a few, you know, yeah, man, let me know when I, uh, here's my number, shoot me a text, we'll find a time to connect. What just happened there? Now, my circle that before was just me and, me and Trey and Andrew became now that I could reach out to other great top producers, Jack Yu, um, I, can't, I, I'm, I don't wanna leave names out because my appreciation level for this company is insane. Like there is, there is so much gratitude and, and for, for every single person, top producer and agency manager for what they've allowed me in their circles, in their, in their 
to learn from them. So I'm not trying to start naming people and not and, and leave some names out, but people will help you. And when you put that out there, then all of a sudden was John in this example goes, yeah, that's right. I met that guy. He was super cool. Here's my number. I call him and say, hey, John, <clears throat> what are you what are you doing? Hey, man. And he goes, hey, man, I just sell, you know, I get out there. I dial 300 dials a, <clears throat> a dial day. I'm booking minimum 30 appointments because at this point in my business, I'm not getting that 30. Maybe I'm at 17, maybe I'm at 14. Maybe I'm hoping my skill set from previous businesses is going to carry me through. It's a big thing. Don't let your previous successes or failures limit what you can create here. I, you know, and I, then all of a sudden I go, so that's it. Like, and John goes, yeah, man, I'm just running 30 appointments a week, hitting those 300 dials, got plenty of leads. You know, I try to group my appointments, do a few door knocks on, on my run days, just to making sure I get enough sits to, to make enough sales. And th you know what that did for me? It gave me clarity. So for you guys, as you're struggling on your, as you're struggling, it's gonna be, there's gonna be challenges on the way. Get to a convention to equip yourself in a position where you can get around create those early relationships, even if they're small micro sized relationships, micro introductions, micro connections, that it creates that reciprocity trigger that when you message Steve Giordano and say, hey, Steve, man, met you at that convention. You were a great speech. I appreciate all you've done. The records you're hitting are incredible. Just, dude, if you had two minutes to just give me some tips, I'd appreciate it so much. And I tell you, the five, 10 people that introduce themselves to Steve and are appreciative and grateful and you know respectful of his time, so I'm sure he's got a lot to do, he's building a huge team, those people are gonna get a, get a phone call back from him. And that's the difference between people that are constantly seeking resolutions to their challenges and people that are sitting there going, the world owes me something, right? Oh, the love the, the, I don't love the agents who, everybody, everybody owes them something. Why, why, did, why didn't this person answer me on Facebook? Why didn't this person, this, you know, no one helps each other here. Well, how did you open your question? You know, demanding, right? There's so much gratitude and appreciation and, and in a sense that if you can come at this from looking that, Okay, people here are winning and succeeding at such a high level. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek resolution internally to try to find these answers before I sh shun on the system. Because we know the system works, right? You know, drop a one in the comments below if you know the system works, right? <laughs> people go, is that FFL thing really work? Yeah, it really works. Check the Carfax. It definitely works. Um, and so in that sense, I try to be very transparent for people and saying, you know, put yourself in a position where you can get better. So number one, sell 20K a week. Sell 20K a week, sell 20K a week, sell 20K a week. Get yourself in that position where you're trying to get to 20K a week, okay? Um, next, your goal is staff. Your goal is staff, invest in yourself, invest in the growth of your business, right? You're, you're there, I can't think of anything other, um, anything more important to the growth of your business and agency than getting help. And whether that's age, other agents you hire, who've got a goal like you do to build a big agency, or whether that is staff. Because I'll tell you, when I hired my, when my, when I didn't hire my wife, and I asked her to help out and do thank you cards and follow up calls and check pending. There was a massive sense of relief. Five, 10 hours a week, all of a sudden freed me to dial more, run more appointments, hire. And that was such a transition for me from going, all right, this is me against the world. We'll see if it works or if I or if it doesn't work like all the other things I've tried that haven't worked. Or we'll see if I can't, I don't wanna screw this up now. I don't wanna let, I don't want, I want, I don't wanna let my wife down, of course. But as I hired Jade, it was like, Jade's depending on me to continue to build this business so she can pay her bills. So I can compensate her for the incredible work she does. And if I screw this up, I'm letting not only my family down, I'm letting her family down. There's a little bit of pressure in there. You can think about it, but like that was a, that was a welcomed weight to my shoulders. And I think that for you guys who wanna go out there and build something huge and, and harvest the fruit that is at the end of this railroad with this business, welcoming on new challenges and new stresses is something that great people like to seek. And if you don't feel that way, well, dabble your toe in it. And you might go, hey, guess what? So now since I hired my staff member, I never sell below 20K. Since I hired my second staff member, I never sell below 30K. But that's a big thing that like, I think that people don't take on as soon as they should because a staff member can actually make you so much more money because they're gonna call back the clients that you know maybe were kind of a, you know iffy, but they're calling you and you don't call them back. And then what happens? 
Now they're confused, but guess what? They just want to change their beneficiary form or they just want to scoot up their draft date or they just want to increase their coverage or decrease their coverage just $12 because their budget would be better that way. And so using staff to facilitate those conversations is so much more efficient for your time. So get yourself in a position where you get staff. I started with someone part-time who could work from nine till two but they drop their kids off, they pick their kids up in the afternoon, they can work for me for five hours a week. Maybe it was my uncertainty of my confidence in the business early on, but I felt though someone part-time would be great for me because I didn't have that much work for them, but I had enough for them. But somebody having a conversation with a staff member and saying like, my goal is to build a large agency here. The people I work with have half million, million, two million dollar a month agencies, and I don't have, that, those are my goals. And so you coming on board is not just, I'm not just looking for someone for three to six months. I'm looking for someone that I could almost be a partner with, right? You're a, you know, you're a staff member that helped this agency grow. And like when you're hiring someone, hire someone with passion and intent and they'll follow you. They'll want to work with you. My goal is to make not only our agency great and to help our agents get better and help people circumvent the challenges that I had to dip, deal with early on in the business, but to help my staff start to live a great life. Like I, I love the fact that, you know, Jade has, Jade is now an integrity employee. Like that means that's incredible for her, for what, we, what we're doing, the future that, that holds now with that partnership, it's exciting. But that's something that I come all the way back to you guys as a new agent, like set the visionary goals for yourself. That's a, that's a goal. Like I'm looking for someone who's got, like, they're gonna be an integrity employee. That's a six and a half billion dollar company. Like there's some, <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool, right? They, they can offer benefits and staff and four, 401k and PTO and all this sort of benefits. So like as you're progressing, have conversations with your, your staff and future staff that this is what the future looks like for you if we get together and get to work on this. Um, you know, when you're hiring staff, you know, conversation, a good early onset conversation is listen, in the first, you know, we're, when you're bringing them on and you like them, okay, so this is what's gonna happen. The first 30 days, we're either gonna give you a raise or we're gonna part ways. And I didn't mean it for it to rhyme, but that's kind of like the, the message of it. It's like, listen, and what does that do for them? It gives them clarity that in 30 days, I'm either gonna make more money or this isn't gonna work out, right? But it also creates an energy behind them that they wanna push hard to do a really good job for you. And that really sets the tone for your business. So the work that they're doing, what, you know, if you're starting your business, it's pending, it's follow-up, it's chargebacks, it's thank you cards, then it's helping you get your agents onboarded, right? If you're putting people in class, helping that process happen. If you're putting people in contracting, making sure they're getting insurance pay and these certain tasks done, getting people on your marketing channels, right? And then you start to bring on more staff, but that pressure and relief, it's pressure of having now someone that you're responsible for, but the relief of now knowing that you've got someone that's, that's got your back. There's a lot of value in that, a lot of value in that. And big thing, I wouldn't hire any friends or family, just too much stress. Because if they let you down, it's how, it's pretty hard to fire your sister. You know, it's pretty hard to fire your brother, especially if they become accustomed to the income that you're paying them. So I would hire not a not a family or friend, uh, someone outside of your circle, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, um, Craigslist, uh, Warm Market, Warm Market. They're not a friend. A friend of a friend is always a great way to find someone. Um, so right track. That's the, that's the section we're on right now. Sell 20k staff, office space. Now, if you don't have an office near you, set a goal to start hiring agents in your backyard and then you can eventually help you to open an office. FFL's corporate goal is 400 offices in 2021. We'll help you. Um, on top of that, if you don't have office space, getting on one of your local live dial teams on Zoom. Those are great resources for an office environment to be on with other people as they're progressing in their business. Um, invest back in your business and some, you know, some major points as we progress and, and moving into the right tracks that I want to want to cover and I'll bring up here in a second is <clears throat> things that I'm seeing the most successful, fastest growing teams doing are this one, they're buying agent interested leads. So either they're they're And what I mean by that is they're not just relying on warm market. Warm market's great. Social media is great. But when you put capital into ZipRecruiter and career builder and indeed, and Facebook job posts and you spend actual money and the people that come back out of there are interested car salesmen or solar salesmen or, or just regular old Joes who've got ambition and are looking for something different, that's buying interest. So spending your money, so start at 20K, get to 30, get to 40K, and all of a sudden now you can put money out to return interested people that are looking to get started with your agency. Number two is the live dial team. So I remember Dom Rogers and Zach Twardowski then Isaiah and Jordan Pryor, and now we've got a bunch of dial teams. Those, they guys started the Zoom dial team. 
And now I see that as such a valuable asset. So for you new agents, we know dialing sucks, <laughs> right? We know it. It's the hardest part of the business. And let me back up. It's not hard. It's mentally challenging, mentally annoying, mentally um, it's where the most growth has to come because when you buy a batch of leads as a new agent and the, you two no, two no answers and the third one says I didn't fill it out, you start to challenge and doubt this whole thing. But the reality is you call those first two back later in the day and they both answer. And that third one you have to go, now listen John, were you on the internet on the last day or two? Put down your favorite color is blue looking for final expense life insurance? And he goes, oh yeah, that's right, I did fill that out. And it's learning the right objections. It's not doubting the system, but you're not gonna learn those simple things by yourself. You can't. You can't learn them by yourself, sitting in your spare bedroom, uh, you know, in your, you know, trying to figure this thing out. You have to get around other people. And whether that is in a physical office, if you can get to one, great. If you want to open one, great. Or joining a live Zoom dial team. And all the big teams have them. Join one, get on there, become accountable to the Zoom dial team. Get yourself to a level where you unmute yourself and you dial, let, let great coaching come across line. But that's one of the bigger aspects that I'm seeing that the teams that are growing the fastest are capitalizing on. One, investment in agent leads from multiple different avenues, and two, participating in Zoom dial teams. Because what's the most important thing? Appointments, right? I can have 400 agents, but if, I get, but if they only book 15 appointments and someone has 150 agents or 200 agents and they book 30 appointments each, we're even. So agent number doesn't matter if the appointment number isn't there. Right, I loved um, Jordan, the, the recent video with Jordan Lowry and uh, his commitment to his goals and getting his head shaved. Uh, love you, Jordan. Um, in that video, where they're talking about, from Andrew, Andrew, if you see it, check all the different pages. It came out yesterday, it was uh, uh, Inside the Sale. Zach Todowski, Jordan Lowry, Andrew Taylor. And um, Andrew asks them, he says to them, he says, how, what, how soon do you think someone can sell 20K? And Jordan's answer was in, his, in their second month, right? 15K first month, 20K second month, okay? Zach Trudowski's answer was, I see no issue for them doing it in their first month if they book 30 appointments a week. And that's the answer. More appointments yields more volume. Zach T's team, 10% of them are Hall of Fame producers. And I love that about the culture that they've created. There is a high sales culture, a no, um, a no excuses, 30 appointment minimum culture. And that's part of where, as you continue to team build and build your business and put yourself in a position is having those minimums that you've illustrated are so important for your own business. Do you live by them or do you just say them? Do you have them, you know, as part of your team, um, you know, pillars of what must be done or is it just kind of a great idea? Right, because I know that when Zach T and Easton and those guys get on and dial, they're dialing at 7.30 in the morning, starting at 7.30, 7.31, they've already made their second dial and their focus is to get as many appointments as possible, as fast as possible so they can get off the phone of dialing and get on to recruiting and building their agency. So that's a big component for you guys. How, what time are you starting dialing? Getting focused on that. So, so those two points I want to make sure I covered. Selling. Um, a big thing to understand about selling is if you're going to make 300, say you're going to make 300 dials and your goal is 15 appointments, you're going to get 285 no's. This is a message that Alexander Strait and Gage Peart always talk about. You're going to get 285 no's. What if those 15 appointments come in the last 15 dials? Are you mentally ready for that? Are you mentally prepared to do that? And that's something that I think that if we can become more um, comfortable with sharing the hard part about this business, that it's gonna, there's going to be some, some annoyances and nuisances we're going to have to be tough it out and overcome early on, that the upside can be insane. So a couple more tips on selling that I think travel trips are highly underrated and, and not as talked about as we should. Um, travel trips from a standpoint of from an ROI uh section is you spend, I mean, you spend thousand bucks on rental car and, and a hotel for three days, maybe 1500 if you want to include flight too. I mean, rental car and flight, I mean, that should be about that thousand, 1200 bucks. Then spend another thousand, two thousand dollars on leads. So $3,000. Then at a full booked, you know, 10 appointment, three, four days back to back to back, there's no reason you shouldn't submit 10 to 15,000. So 3,000 of expense, 12,000 you get to keep. 
travel trips are a magic way to be able to massively grow your personal production and then help your agents, maybe in a populated market, get out of their populated market into a less populated market and go make some money. So travel trips are something that, that we always use the CRM, look at the red areas, you know, start with the instant leads, the new internet life leads are great, three month mortgage protection, uh, three month mail pro mortgage protection are great. There's just a ton of great, great options for travel trips that people can start taking to get, to get going. Also return on leads. People go, well, how much can I expect to learn from this and earn from this investment? And generally a rule of thumb has been for every, for every dollar invested when you're brand new, you can pretty much bet on a five times return. So you spend thousand dollars in leads when you're brand new, you should return 5,000 issue paid. As you get better, it should turn up to about 10 times. And how does that work, Greedy? Well, when you're brand new, you're just selling the one policy. You're putting the one policy in place and we're moving, you know, you're moving on to the next house. Well, as you get better, you add two policies. You look for maybe some annuity opportunities. Maybe you're, you're actually saying, hey, John, is that Mary in the, bed, in the bedroom? You want her to come out here and join us? Perfect. Mary, were you looking to protect John as well? Like he's looking to protect you? Perfect. And now you're selling two policies in the home. Oh, you guys have kids? Are they in the house or do they live nearby? Oh, they live nearby? What's their phone number? And now you're putting yourself in a position where you're getting referral opportunities, all from one $11 lead if you got an instant lead. And so for that situation, guys, what I always try to recommend people doing is to look at, look at additional sales opportunities, right? Uh, um, you know, some agents are like, well, I should just get a loan to help grow my business. I'm like, how about you just go take a loan off yourself? Go sell a bunch, take a loan off your own personal efforts because there's no greater ROI than an $11 lead in a $1,000 sale. $11, two $11 leads in a $2,900 sale. I mean, check the Facebook groups each and every day for the amount of um, pr crazy results and ROI people get. And it's not, you know, it's not limited to a certain geographic area. It's anywhere you wanna go. There's so much opportunity out there for people to be able to capitalize and to make money on travel trips and utilizing the CRM lead program, instant leads. I mean, we try to put that up every single day. And you know, if you guys see that, we every single day, the top 50 counties are put there. So when you see Chicago with 1,100 leads and you live in Phoenix and you're going, you know, I wish there was more leads coming in my backyard, eight minutes from my house. How about you book a plane flight on Southwest for 297, round trip for four days, go out there and stay in Chicago, get a rental car. 1,200 bucks later, you got to, you know, invest 2,000 bucks in some leads. You got, you know, 200 leads. Start down the two days before. Dial as soon as you get there, book up 30 plus appointments, go door knock some of the ones that don't answer and go, sell, go have yourself a heyday. But we got agents that go, you know what, I could never do that or I don't know what to do or these, 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 these Facebook lead vendors, they won't get back to me. And I, you know, I ordered Facebook leads and they haven't come in for two weeks. What have you been doing for two weeks? Well, I've been waiting for the lead order to come in. Come on, resolve your problems, right? Weak people wait for the world to, to, to solve their problems for them. Winners go out there and make it happen. They make it happen. They, they say, what, what is my goals? I gotta submit 10K this week. I gotta submit 10K. So do I wait to see if the Facebook lead vendor returns my sixth email, or if those guys are still on vacation, I should just buy instant leads three hours from my house and go take a drive. Rent a, rent a hotel for 119 bucks a night. Like, that's what, that's, that's what make it happen people do. Nina Damianovich goes on three travel trips a month. She goes to Minnesota, she goes to Florida, she goes to Washington, she goes, she's in Ohio right now. First sale in Ohio was 6,000 off an $11 lead. Cause she makes it happen. That's why she had Hall of Fame in her first year and her team's growing like crazy. So that's what like, you know, people are like, well, what, you know, how do they do it? Well, they work harder than you. That's the difference. Some people work harder than you. Some people, a lot of people work harder than me. Some people don't work as hard as me. I mean, it's not me versus anybody. It's just us versus us. It's Grady versus Grady. It's you versus you. We know there, there, there's, these answers are, 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 are spoken daily on calls. And agents get on, listen to these calls, and it's like a warm bath, and it feels good to get on the call, and hear how people are having such great success. And, you know, I'm going to start dialing on Monday. And, you know, I got this vacation planned with my uncle, and I got, I got to do this thing. And, okay, I, I got, we got lots of things to do, but my kids had to eat. So I didn't, I got, I get rid of all the things I had to do and I started missing dinners and I missed dinners five nights a week for two years and made it happen. And that's what I wish other people would do. I wish they'd just give up the now for the real promise that's laying right before them. So 
travel trips, ROI, five times when you're new, 10 times when you get better. And you'll get better by getting on more calls, by listening to the great producers, by more experience. Cause you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna be sitting down one time and Betty's gonna go, could you protect my daughter too? Oh, I could. And then all of a sudden your brain's gonna go, why don't I start asking every Betty I've got if they've got a daughter that might want some protection also. And that's how it gets better. People are like, you know, it's the compound. The compound effect in this business is insane. It is so insane to see what small work happens early on in your business that could yield big production. Like guys that don't sell and want to build a team. I'm like, it's not like, maybe you're financially capital, you're, you're financially set, but it's not just the money for you that's gonna benefit you. It's the creation of trust that's gonna go between you and the agents you're recruiting that's gonna put them in a position where they trust that you know what you're saying is real because they can validate it with a leaderboard. It's that they can trust that the answers you're giving them is gonna, make, is gonna help fix their stresses because they see you each and every week making sales. That's the difference of people that, that, that why I think that it's incredible that we are a production first company. We're not a recruiting house, right? Do we recruit a lot? Yes, we recruit a ton. But the intent is to recruit and then teach people how to sell because we're out there leading by example. And that's the thing that I think that some people miss here. It's don't come here and some people you can recruit and how, how big a spread you can get off someone to make a bunch of money while they go out there and sell insurance and you sit up on your high castle and try to make money. It's no, it's how much, how high can I hire somebody? I just hired a bunch of people at crazy high comp because I'm trying to put them in a position where they now have more money for their families and they can go up there and hire more agencies. Why does, what does that do for them? It puts them in a position where now I've taught them and shown them from an example that it's not about spread. It's about opportunity. It's about getting to that bonus, it's about getting to that 50, $100,000 a month bonus that's non-chargebackable. Who loves chargebacks? Nobody. Just sure. <laughs> who loves a who loves a VP bonus? It's that's a lot of money, everybody. And so that's the thing that you know. You know, respect to my brother David Witcher came in here, gave crazy high comp as much as he could, help people with leads, and now he's going to be one of the fastest integrity partners in the history of the company until someone else comes behind him, right? Witcher broke the Richard broke the four minute mile. Now who's gonna who's gonna break the three minute and fifty seven second mile, right? Is that you? Drop a 357 in the comments below if you're going to break the 357 second mile and do it faster than Witcher did. He showed us what to do. Go out there, recruit your butt off. He went Hall of Fame in his first year. Hall of Fame in his first year and talked to people all day long and gave great every comp he could and had no money in his bank account because he was reinvesting in five staff. And I got guys that, you know, have a hundred, you know, senior sales managers sell 30K a month with no staff and they complain the business doesn't work. And I'm like, bro, it's just, you know, what are you going to do, man? I'm going to listen to you again. Tell me how this thing doesn't work. And Witcher comes in here and smokes us. Smokes, no smoke. And it's, it's simple stuff, right? So mirror people that have what you want. Mirror people that have the track records of success you want. Follow people and trust people who are doing the actions that they're telling you to do. That's what's so great about FFL. So let's move on. A couple more sections as I, as I progress through this. Recruiting, all right? Your goal, more people to talk to. Buying interest, post on social media, uh, post on Zip Recruiter, Career Builder. So what do you post on social media? You know, I love posting, you know, here's Kelly, former, you know, former secretary. You know, I think uh, Nina, Ashley, Alondra, all those girls are very creative and they do such great jobs on social media. Right, picture of Kelly. Uh, Kelly, made, Kelly, former corporate employee, made, $2,200 from an $11 lead in 45 minutes. DM me to learn how, right? Meet Hank, former medical device sales uh, salesman. Made $700 from an $11 lead in 32 minutes. DM me to learn how, right? Normal people, normal jobs, normal lead cost, normal time in the appointment, insane above average income. Because, but it's real here. And so when you post that stuff on social media, it's intriguing. People go, how did they do that? Is that really what's possible? Yeah, that's the commissions here at Family First Life. Not at everybody, because some people like, some people start their agents at 30%. FFL starts agents at 90%. So <laughs> I love all the lines going around, right? Um, what's the line? Everyone's eventually gonna work at Family First Life. Why is that? Well, because everyone has a calculator, right? I love it. Um, and so that's the big thing for us to understand 
is that if we can post just normal stuff on social media, people are gonna be intrigued by and start conversations in your warm market. I don't have a crazy big social media presence, so for me, I buy interest. I just want numbers. I want people to talk to. I don't want to know if my creative social media post is going to garner results from people to start conversations with. I want people that have applied on ZipRecruiter, CareerBuilder, in, Indeed, Facebook job posts, etc., and said, "I'm interested in your, you know, high commission insurance sales job. I'm interested in, you know, being a top comp broker. I'm interested in working, you know, for this agency because it goes compensation up to 145 percent. It looks like you've got warm buyer leads and no contracts, best in rules day one. Tell me more about that. Okay, you got it. Let's get on the phone." Perfect. That's who I'm trying to talk to. So for, for recruiting, your goal is people to talk to. Recruiting basics, get people in your Facebook groups, tag them in positive posts. As soon as you add someone to a Facebook group, I tag them in 10 posts. And then I also, I'm, I'm you know, I was, I'd send people the leaderboard. I, I was the number one producer on my team until Julius and Clay and Nina and Jen and all these great producers showed up. But hey, they showed up. I love them. And in that situation, when I was recruiting, and I was the number one guy each and every week, I'd take the leaderboard and I'm sending out to 30 prospects. Hey, hey John, uh, hope you're having a good day. Just want to follow up with you, see if you've got a chance to watch over your video. We got to get you on this list, brother. Boom, delete it, take out John. Hey Nancy, hey Tim, hey Javier, hey Steve, hey whomever. And I'm sending out that leaderboard in text, personal text messages. Everyone wants to hire a recruiter from the Philippines to build their business. I don't have a recruiter. I've talked to every single Frontline prospect on my team personal. Why? Because I'm the front line of my business. I get to decide who I'm gonna work with. I should be deciding who I'm working with. How much credibility and value am I showing to that new person that I'm talking to if I'm the one they're talking to? Because I have time for them, because I'm not too important to hire a recruiter and, and not be the frontline person. That, that for me was important that I got to decide who's gonna come into my business. And so for you guys, I think that that's an important aspect is to just get more people to talk to, get more people to talk to, and then show them you have a track record of success. So the managers that don't want to sell, you have a disadvantage against my top agents or any top agent that does sell. Because if I was a recruit and some, two people were prospecting me and one's at the top of the leaderboard and one wasn't on the leaderboard, I would pick the one on the leaderboard because I can trust they can teach me how to sell. It's math. <laughs> this person isn't, isn't making money, apparently. Maybe they say they're making money, but apparently it doesn't look like they're making money. And this person made 11,000 last week. Well, I'm gonna talk to them, right? So that's for you guys is ascend, get, if you're not creating leaderboards for your team, you're doing yourself a disservice because it's just great marketing. Important message, guys. We run our own IMOs, right? What does IMO stand for? Insurance Marketing Organization. Marketing. We're a marketing agency. Integrity buys marketing agencies. And so for you, this, the sooner you can get yourself at 20K and get staff and get an office and create assets and get an email list and create content and get your logo, get your logo. I'm so happy everyone who's got logos because they've ascended to a level of respect. The sooner that you can start to create a business of value. So that's a, that's a big component for it is using the leaderboards with prospects to show them you're someone they can trust. And that's a huge part. I, you know, most people we're recruiting are not broke and unemployed and homeless. They're, you know, they're, they're in another career they're, or in transition and they're looking for something. Are you someone that can deliver for them something to give them ease? Are you someone who's exuding the qualities that they can walk away from what they're currently doing and walk into what you're doing. And you can't show them with your words. You can show them with your numbers. You can show them with facts. And facts are bank accounts and bank statements and leaderboards. And that's a, a great way to um, increase your recruiting is increase your, your social media presence. So I'm going to give you some tips real quick as we close out this call. And we call this um, five things to adjust your recruiting presentation. Okay, so top people, there's a, a book, an article went out about like uh, recruiting and prospecting and, and how to attract great people. And, and I'm gonna kind of go through this here for you to kind of give you these points that I think might help as you're actually talking to people. But top people who are looking for something, like, uh, like if someone's gonna work with Apple or Microsoft or Google, they're making decisions on whom they're gonna work with and what they're gonna do based on these five points in this order. So when you're talking to a potential recruiter prospect on the phone, start this, start, 
you know, I hopefully you're taking notes, but go this way. People. People are looking for great people. They're looking to be around great people. You know, and so words you can use with the finest leaders in business. You can get around, pick great habits off them, learn from their past experiences and future goals. Right? The people at FFL are the finest in the industry. The highest, we have the highest producers in the industry. We have the agency managers in the simplified issue space of the largest agencies in the industry. So these are great people that you get to get around and learn from. Number two, FFL is a challenge. This is not easy. Most people don't make it, but this is important work. This is important work that you can you know, feel value that you're doing. You're protecting hardworking families. You're, putting, you're helping people learn a great skill set. Um, you have a chance to build an agency to put people in a position where um, they, can, they can flourish and blossom and create massive agencies. So talking about the challenge this is going to be. So people, challenge. Number three, the opportunity. Insurance in 2020, 2021. Um, Commission-based opportunities. This is one of the finest commission-based opportunities that exist. $11 leads, recession-proof industry, uh, contractual guarantees for compensation, renewals, build a team, overrides for teaching new agents what you've learned. So talk about the opportunity, so, right? So the great people, you know, it's, this is not easy, man. I mean, I remember every time I got Andrew Taylor on a recruiting call, you know, it's, it was like 30 seconds. He's like, um, listen, man, you have to work your butt off. It's really hard, but if you work real hard, you can do great here. I gotta go. And it was just short, he just did the challenge. But, but, for, but to understand that is letting people know it's gonna be hard so that they have to decide, am I ready for hard in my life? Am I ready for hard or do I wanna keep playing it easy? Do I wanna keep playing it the, the slow road? So that's, a, that's an important thing to discuss on recruiting calls. Opportunity, what the upside is, right? FFL did $325 million in issue paid commissions to our agents in 2020. That seems like a great opportunity to partner with a company that's doing that, especially in a $678 billion industry. We're doing 325 million. So we're like, bitty, 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 tiny, bitty, bitty. What's the opportunity? It's huge. Because when a lot of companies out there that are cross line our space, so I at 30%, we start at 90%, what's the opportunity for them, for you, for someone who's looking at this video and going, is FFL really where I wanna be? Yes, it is. Uh-huh, 100%, it is, if you wanna work hard. This is the best place where people wanna get paid well for working hard. You don't work hard, don't, don't message the person back that sent you this link. It just, it, 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 you're not gonna like it, because we work way too hard. But we also get paid really, really well for working hard. So you gotta decide that. So it's, it's, do I'm ready for more, more of life, or do I wanna stay where I'm at? It, this is your decision, not mine but look forward to you making the right one. Number four, personal growth. You will become more, the skills you will learn, the skills you will develop, the habits you will create for yourself, right? This is, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna learn a lot, I mean, you're gonna learn how to produce, you're gonna learn how to lead people, you're gonna learn how to make hard decisions, you're gonna make decisions fast, right? Successfully will make decisions fast. That's one thing successful will do. And then the last thing is money, financial upside, 145% comp, um, vested renewals day one, etc. The thing is, I think a lot of people lead with they lead with the 145 instead of leading with how great the people are on your team or how great the manager is that you get to work with, how great the Sean Mike is as a, as a leader and a selfless leader who's continually focused on creating this as the best opportunity we can be. So when you talk about that, all of a sudden people think back to the environment that they came from, which is the reason why they're trying to leave that environment is that the people they were around, they don't want to be around anymore. That's why they're looking for change. Money is great, but if I can be around great people and then eventually make great money too, now you're hooking someone to really understanding what we do here at FFL. That's the big difference on a good recruiting presentation versus just a ho-hum average. You know, hey John, you're in insurance. We got 145s here, you should join. Uh, cool, man, okay, but okay. Or if, hey John, we got the best people. You know, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be harder than where you've come from, but the financial side and opportunity is better than you could ever imagine. The skills you're gonna develop, um, on how to hustle insurance at a very high level and lead a team and grow a big business is something that's gonna pay you a lot. Change your order, change your order. So your goal is to become great at talking to people and becoming the person you want to recruit. That's a big thing. Become the person you want to recruit. Do I lay my head down on the pillow, on my pillow every single night, satisfied with what I've done? Most nights, but a lot of nights I, I go, I should have done this more. I should have called that guy back. Should have texted that guy back. I'll text him right now and tell him let's talk tomorrow, right? Having that feverish desire to want to get better is something that top agency managers, top producers have. And so for, you know, you know to, to, from self-reflection, every single day, are you reflecting on what you've done throughout that day and putting yourself in a position and going, if my team did what I did today, the business would have grown. And if that's the answer to your question, if you can check that box, you're going to have a massive agency very, very soon. So I conclude with this. Team focus for you as a new producer. Get, we're, we're very logo focused now and I love it about that. 
Month one, sell 20K. Month two, start recruiting some people, get the sales manager, right? How do you do that? Sell 20K, hire, hire six people who write 5K. Now you're at 50,000, you're a sales manager in month two. Month three, get your logo. Get yourself up to get your double your double your people and sell 30k by your third month and you need 12 people to sell five grand and you now have your logo and i think that's a great thing where if you make your goals your team goals and you focus on what they're trying to accomplish and helping those people that are making five thousand a month get to 10 15 20 by helping them with lead flow you're going to put yourself in a position where you're growing a healthy business that's gonna allow you to really, really create something. And I think that's what the best teams here at FFL do, is they focus on each and every one of their great agents and find out what they're really trying to accomplish and helping them put a plan in and get there. That's where you know, a large part of the company focuses on is how can I take someone with passion, desire, and energy, and no matter where they're at in the whole business, doesn't matter who's their upline, cross line, whatever, what is habits that we can help them refine and become better at, help them get staff, help them get office space, help them with recognition, and put them in a position where they're starting to really grow a healthy business. So I appreciate you guys. I'll leave you with this. My, 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 my plea to you is to sacrifice. I trust this is the real deal, so I sacrifice. Do you trust us? Do you trust us? Um, and I challenge that you don't 100% yet because you would work so much harder if you did. So many people out there have one toe in and nine toes out and they're just checking us out seeing if the leads work. And I promise you that if you'll sacrifice and you'll give up your limiting beliefs and you'll give up your lack of faith and you'll give up your inability to go all in and just get to convention and invest in leads and dial the phone like your life depends on it, because it does, the life you want depends on you getting graded down on the phone. That if you'll do those simple things, the life you'll recognize here in a year from now will be one that you could even, you could even imagine. I'll leave you with that. I look forward to seeing you at convention. I look forward to seeing you at the events this year. Um, I appreciate your time. I know you're, this is an hour of your time, but it's an hour of mine. I hope you got great value out of it. And I'll leave you with this, that there's no guarantee that attending convention, you're gonna become out of it becoming successful. But I guarantee that every successful person who's successful at FFL will attend a convention. So make that choice. Join us. Become a part of it. Come say hi to me. I'd love to see you. And if you're going to one of the other great events, introduce yourself to the other top producers and top agency managers. Start to build that connection across this whole great company of ours. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, FFL. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.